Chair, I would like uh, to take the opportunity to thank the organizers in general. And I will talk about uh, details of the organization of the conference. And thank you very much for your invitation. I have been working over the past two years, uh, rather the past uh, few years, uh, um, in the field of uh, genocide. And I will, I will talk to you about an issue that is related uh, to the problems that we are currently witnessing uh, with Turkey. The analysis by experts of uh, massive violence lays usually emphasis on physical violence and on the physical strength uh, that uh, aims at uh, the uh, supremacy, the killing, or the damages causing uh, mental uh, pain and physical pain to the victims. Uh, they do not often deal with the narrative violence which uh, um, influences and acts uh, as a menace uh, or an urge uh, to uh, be violent uh, and, are and is usually accompanied by phrases and words and victims usually reply in crimes. It is followed by rage and by a narrative about what uh, took place and uh, uh, help us understand what happened exactly. So all these answers create moral pain and suffering. Genocide comprises all such uh, characteristics, all such aspects. Uh, however, genocides have a characteristic. Uh, they show an organization, uh, a planning that leads to genocide. We uh, analyze when we analyze the articles written about uh, such things, we realize uh, mention of uh, persecution, ethnic cleansing, killings, uh, deportations, laying particular emphasis on the annihilation of a minority, a religious or ethnic minority, which has been caused mainly by a state. And that challenge is uh, that act uh, it was made out of intent. Uh, it was a volunt. It was it it was uh, a planned uh, act. Uh, then we have la uh, forced labor uh, marches, battalions in in human under inhuman conditions, uh, torture mutilations, uh, torture of women and children, executions uh, and abductions of children and so on and so forth. These are all very important things but they usually take place later. As I have uh, already stated in my last book uh, dealing with uh, the narrative violence, uh, there is no physical uh, violence without uh, a verbal or narrative uh, violence. Uh, many descriptions have been made in the field, uh, descriptions of the facts by victims who survived or by their relatives or by diplomats and organizations. Uh, however, uh, ma references and mentions uh, which are connected uh, uh, to the instigators, well, they're very sporadic. <laughs> But narrative uh, violence uh, plays an important role because it gradually, progressively prepares for slaughters and genocide. And that preparation is based on a programmed policy that wishes to create a milieu, uh, a climate of terrorism that will eventually lead to genocide. In practice, uh, genocide, a genocide policy promotes stereotypes of homogenization and um, ideologies that create fanaticism and that are deeply rooted in the passions and the interests of uh, specific groups. So, so they actually uh, uh, plant uh, the seeds in order to uh, allow uh, 
intolerance to grow and to promote their own practices. Therefore, I believe that prevention of genocides requires the deconstruction uh, of the narrative that shapes and instigates such acts. I would say that this deconstruction should be followed by penalties and sac sanctions against those, especially the states, uh, who uh, plan and implement uh, and shape such narratives. Uh, what Turkey currently is doing with the violent and uh, menacing narrative, well, this can lead to a very uh, dangerous situation uh, for it creates an atmosphere, an environment in, the Tur in Turkey, among the Turkish people, uh, that is very dangerous. It is creating a, a a reputation and uh, legends or myths that are quite dangerous. Uh, and I will say a few words uh, I will, I, uh, uh, for you to better understand what I mean. Because uh, in 1944, we all wondered, what is a genocide? Genocide started long ago in all civilizations in all eras. Today we understand what this is because we have grown to understand certain other aspects better. In February 1914, the French diplomat uh, Auguste Pop uh, made the following uh, statements to the minister Gaston Dumert. The chauvinist narratives of the activists of the Committee Union and Progress uh, uh, managed to disseminate uh, messages in the masses of the population, of the Turkish population, which will most likely trigger religious fanaticism or will create a spirit, an anti-Christian spirit. You do realize uh, the narrative violence in that. There are uh, certain elements, the diplomat says, in that uh, propaganda which uh, can, we, we should not underestimate. Uh, an article, a diplomatic article of March uh, uh, 1914 by an Austrian diplomat addressed to the government says, the, Turkish, uh, have the Turks have understood that real supremacy hegemony is mainly, hegemony is mainly economic. Uh, uh, they wish to boycott, to sabotage uh, the splendor of the Greeks, and they wish to uh, reduce their strength. And, uh, with reference to the Armenians, well, they didn't bother them until that moment. They hadn't bothered them until that moment because they needed them. Uh, because um, they prevailed on, only in big cities, especially in the Anatolia, where uh, the population was Armenian or Kurdish. But the narrative for the Greeks and about the Greeks uh, was concentrated in specific uh, sentences. Mm. They said that the Greeks uh, exploit the Turks and they take their rich, richness. Uh, uh, they uh, constantly show their love for Greece and they are a political vehicle of Greece. The Turks, uh, which were put in exile from Macedonia, they disseminated their hatred and they created a feeling of xenophobia. And this is what the Austrian diplomat uh, stated. And the Germans uh, uh, would, would see and understand all, all such things. A letter by the Ecumenical Patriarchate says that in order to strengthen the Committee of uh, Union and Progress, well, it would send letters to the regions to inform the supporters uh, about the real, the, 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 the necessary propaganda they had to instigate and disseminate in order to achieve the desired results. So they would create uh, uh, narrative violence 
as a preamble to uh, the mental and physical violence. Uh, to allow such policies to succeed, the committee would distribute privileges and territories. Uh, fourth example, eight months earlier, on the 15th of September 1915, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Talat, informed through a telegraph the leadership of the Young Turks in Aleppo that that Turkey had decided the destruction of the Armenians. So he writes, we must put an end to the existence of the Armenians regardless of how vicious and cruel and criminal the means we will deploy will be. We should not take into account, uh, we must not take, take into account their age, their gender or whatever. Then, uh, in another telegraph, he added, uh, no care should be taken for women, of women or children or patients, uh, regardless of the uh, the viciousness of the means of extermination. We should not take into consideration um, <clears throat> the feelings of conscience. Uh, we must simply put an end to their existence. When you read such things, you're terrified because it is the speech, uh, the words that lead to uh, real situations and acts. So from words to deeds. Then. Uh, the 30th of June 1916, a letter to the Chancellor of Germany by a German ambassador in Istanbul, stating the following, the committee demands the annihilation of the remaining uh, surviving Armenians. Uh, displacements, deportations of Armenians have already started, but the wolves of the committee uh, they have nothing to expect from them. They have no interest uh, whatsoever. Their properties have been uh, already confiscated and, their prop and, and, and they've been uh, liquidated. Uh, they have nothing. They, 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 they've been left with nothing. Uh, but then we read, and I, I want you to pay attention to that because it is about Greece. We are preparing for the moment. Greece will be forward um, to declare war against Turkey and its ally or its uh, allies. Then there will be many more s and more vicious slaughters with more victims, and the looting will be even more vicious. So, couch. Um, uh, the Greeks are part of uh, the culture of Turkey. Uh, we will destroy it like we destroyed uh, the Armenians. Uh, and then he adds, Turkification means deportation, killing, extermination of every non-Turkish element and the looting of uh, the property of other people. So you do realize how the Armenian and the Pontian and the genocides and the genocide of Asia Minor were prepared, were designed and implemented. I could have brought several other uh, documents, um, actually, because we often uh, tend to conceal a fact, before the Shoah genocide against the Jews, the Russians had already perpetrated, committed a plethora of genocides for class uh, uh, reasons, purposes, social class purposes. And I will uh, refer to a text for you to understand. Uh, we had reactions back then. Uh, before Hitler, Karl Kratschy, a Russian, he wrote about terrorism and communism. Trotsky replied with the same title. 
I'm not going to enter into detail because I have done so in my book on narrative violence, but Trotsky uh, writes that we have to terrify, to terrorize the enemies and to exterminate them. In order for a revolution to succeed, we need to resort to all means of violence. So you do understand what happened in the Soviet Union. Four years later, Hitler arrives and writes his uh, book, which constitutes one of the most terrifying books uh, on narrative violence. Uh, and with his book, and please don't forget that we are talking about 1918, uh, 1918, uh, Germany lost the war. This is how the Nazis uh, came into force. And uh, there was a lot of pain after the defeat. There was a lot of poverty. So they, uh, they fight against capitalism and the Jews and the Western civilization. And they take these two enemies, the Marxists, not because he was against Marxism, only, but because he thought that Marxism was the child of uh, uh, the Jews. And there was a special mention of uh, the Jews, and he would uh, gradually start promoting his own policies. Leni Riefrestel, a woman who was not condemned after the war, well, she did two things uh, during the conference of Nuremberg. She uh, actually uh, worked in the field of uh, the propaganda of Hitler. Well, he, she supported, uh, strengthened rather, the policies of uh, the Germans, uh, which led to the genocide. And in 1936, the same uh, film director uh, worked in the field of the Olympic Games and she presented the Germans with their bodies and they <clears throat> didn't, uh, they hid actually the black athletes. So we see a, p a propaganda, we see this narrative violence which will gradually prepare, uh, pave the way rather, for the genocides that will follow. And I will end with another issue uh, where technology played an important role. Rwanda. In Rwanda, when uh, the regime of Marimana came uh, to force, into force, his friends created a station, uh, the Utus. This station radio station was called the free radio of uh, the 1000 hills and they started disseminating propaganda uh, with music with humorism to attract uh, the youth and uh, start uh, talking against Tutsi gradually well this propaganda a few days before the genocide said, you will see what will happen tomorrow. Tomorrow we will all witness events we would never have expected. And all of a sudden, uh, the airplane of the Prime Minister fell, crashed, and the tragedy started. And the radio station uh, would uh, push the Utus uh, to kill uh, with knives. Uh, it was terrifying. And we see that technology starts uh, being exploited as a means to create genocide, to instigate genocide, f which lasted for a few days. Of course, they've all been condemned. Many of those perpetrate perpetrators uh, went to Congo, Kivu, and they started uh, raping uh, women and they used uh, violence as a weapon, as a tool of war, raping people to humiliate men and to hurt women. So 
that they will never be able to have uh, children. A doctor, Bukwaye, who is a colleague of mine currently at the University of Brussels, he is a professor. Well, he, he worked with Carter, um, a doctor, and they saved uh, thousands of lives. And Mukweye received the Nobel Prize because he managed, they managed to show the world hmm, how actually certain people used uh, violence and technology as a weapon of war. I want to dedicate my work to Mukweye Kadier and his work, his rather his group, his team, because I believe that these people who worked uh, to save thousands of people, uh, not only in words but also with their deeds, is something we should need to talk about. And this is uh, why the genocide of uh, the Pontic Greeks is important because uh, the blue country, which is the motto the blue homeland which is the motto of turkey today is narrative violence we don't see the consequences right now but they can be terrifying for the future because if an episode if an event takes place it will be worse than what we saw in cyprus this is why journalists and uh, the other media should not underestimate those phenomena that uh, appear only political, appear to be only political. So we must pay attention. Well, this, this is a strategy. This is not just nonsense. It is a strategy. And uh, there should be sanctions about all such things, because we couldn't, we can't uh, foresee the results. And the results can